Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Continuing on with the video on the relationship between the t distribution and the chi square and standard normal distribution, we now turn our attention to question 2. Consider the independent variables xi, each of which are normally distributed with mean of 0 and the variance of 4. So we're not talking about standard normal here, i from 1 to 4. Solve for k the following. All right. Now, let's recall the kind of problems we used to. Used to solving things of the form probability of a random variable, say y bigger than k, then equal to 0.05. Here, k is unknown. All right. Now, what we need to know is that once we've got no is the distribution of y. Because once we've got the distribution of y, we can look up the relevant table say y is long here, bigger than k, k is that point there, and that area in the tail there is 0.05. But that's only if y is a symmetric distribution. But who's to say it is a symmetric distribution? It could be, for example, chi-square, which is not symmetrical, look like this. Then, if that along there is y, k is somewhere along here, because that tail there is about 0.05. Alright? So, we need to know what the distribution of y is. But even before we can do the distribution of what, know what distribution of y is, we have to rewrite this question. Because look, this inequality, cos on the left hand side you've got of the inequality you've got a random variable, but on the right hand side of the inequality you've got also a product of a constant with a random variable, so they're jumbled up. So to get of this form where we've got the in the inequality we've got the random variable all on the left hand the side and the number on the right hand side, we're going to have to rearrange this. Just forget about the probability for now, all that. Just look at the inequality, x1 bigger than blah. All right, well, look, since x3 squared and x4 squared, they are non-negative because they're squared terms, it must mean the square root is bigger than or equal to 0. So if we divide both sides of the inequality by that number, which is bigger than 0, that preserves the inequality. So in other words, this thing here is the same as this thing where I've divided through by square root of blah. All right, and now it is of the form y bigger than a number because here this whole thing ratio here is our variable y. Let's call it y, and it's bigger than a number k. So what remains is to find the distribution of this y. Look at the top there. That's a normal. Divide by the square root of sum of normal squares. Well, we know if we have sum of normal squares, that's looking like a chi-square. So we've got something looking like the square root of a chi-square. We've also got normal. And we know that a normal divided by the square root of a chi-square, divided by its respective degree of freedom, is t, so long as top and bottom they are independent, the x1s and the chi-square. So we should be thinking about t, all right? But we can't write down t straight away because in this case, this is not standard normal. These x's are not standard normal. So we should be thinking, how can I rewrite it so it is standard normal? With standard normals in. So let's take this y. Let's look at the top first. Well, we note that, oh, right, I've got an equality here because I'm going to express this in diff various different but equivalent ways, but I'm going to do it so that we end up having standard normals instead z's instead of x's. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's look at the top, and you'll see how I'm going to do it. It's all the usual steps I've done before. X1 is normal, distributed normally with a mean of zero and a variance of four. We know that to standardize it, we subtract the mean divided by standard deviation. So that is x1 minus 0 over 2 divide by and let's just write the bottom down again okay so I've changed something here because from here to here I've divided it by 2 but you know I don't want to be this now is not y exactly because I've divided it by 2 so to make sure that it's still y if I divide it by 2, I must multiply by 2, like 
like so. So that cancels out with that and now it's all the same. But the thing why I've done that now is then because now I can say that this thing in the brackets here is standard normal, so it is Z1. Okay. Right, next. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. That's 2Z1, we're taking care of the top, that's looking more like what we want. Let's do the same on the bottom. That thing, same argument. X3 all over 2 squared Okay, well to make this same as x3 squared, we got to multiply by 4. Likewise, x4 squared, x4 over 2, that whole thing squared, multiplied by 4. So, it remains. This bottom bit is the same as this bit, alright? Does that look alright? Yep. Okay. But we've got a common. Let's look at the denominator. We've got a common factor of four. So that I've um, got a square root of that, so that obviously can come out, and it'll be two. Let's tidy this up. This thing here is obviously standard normal. Let's call it Z three squared. And this thing here, Z. 4 squared. So long as you know what the idea here, all this, uh, what I'm doing here, shouldn't be confusing to you because you know where I'm going. If you don't know why I'm doing all this, that's all like spaghetti, then you've got to go back early to the video to see, to uh, listen out for when I'm talking, to do, listen out for my strategy. Okay? Right, so let's tidy this up. So we've got 2z1 on the top. We said on the bottom the 4 square root of 4 is 2. That's a common factor comes out. And then here is the square root of z3 squared plus z4 squared. Um, this is the same as y. So all this here is same as this here. We see from this that those two twos cancel. All right. Okay. You know we're getting there step by step, just building it as we go. So we've got a standard normal divided by this down here is chi square. Two degrees of freedom. Why? Is that case because each of the z's, each of the x's and hence the z's are independent normals. So to make that clear let's write this with a less notation. So we have a standard normal divided by square root of a chi-square with two degree of freedom. Okay. Now to make it look like a t, we have to divide this chi-square by its respective degree of freedom. Now, to make, I think it, make it clearer what I'm doing with the algebra, let's just rewrite it. What I've just done here, let's just rewrite it. Okay, divide this by the standard normal by the chi-square. Same as multiplying it by 1 over chi-square. 2 degrees of freedom. Now, this bottom I want to divide this to make it look like a t, divide it by its respective degree of freedom, which is 2. But 
if I've divided here by the bottom bit by 1 over root 2, I must divide the top by 1 over root 2 to keep everything balanced. Okay, and this, maybe written like this. Why I've, the purpose of doing that is now to split it so that I can see something which is clearly t, standard normal, divided by the chi square, divided by its respective degree of freedom, where those two are independent, and then the 1 over root 2. Okay, so that is my. That is my y. Let's make it clear here. And this is not on its t, it's t with degree of freedom 2. So substituting this back into, basically the hard work is done now. So substituting this back, it's all downhill from here. Substituting this back into the question, so the form here, probability at y is bigger than k, where k is what I want to find, equal to 0 0.05 is the same as, and we're just showing that the y here is t distribution 2 times 1 over root 2. That is a number, as we said, we want to keep all the random variables to the left hand side, all the numbers to the other side. This is a random variable follows a t distribution with two degree of freedom. So what we have is t, a random variable which is follows a t distribution of degree of freedom two times the square root of uh, two times k equals 0.05. Come on. And we're going to use a t table with two degree of freedom to look for this. We know a t is symmetrical and the area in the tail, because it's a bigger sign, we'll look at the right hand side, this is going to be k over root 2. Now appealing to the table, k over root 2, k over root 2 is, uh, what is it equal to? Uh, it's equal to 4.303, you check that in, my, in the tables there. So rearranging for k, K is going to be about coming about 3.04. Phew. Did you follow all that? Let's review. So the idea is we want it of the form probability of a random variable bigger than, or it could be less than, but in this question it's bigger than a number equals. 0.05 is the question that's given probability. We want to find the distribution of this ver random variable, so which we can use the table. Our initial problem here is that in the question, the random variables is both on left and right side of the inequality. So first, what we do is we take them all over to the left hand side. After doing that, we recognize that the top part is a normal, the bottom part involves the square root of a chi square, so we are thinking t distribution and then we manipulate it so that we get these um, the numerator and denominator which expressed as non-standard normal we want to express them in terms of standard normal and as we proceed to keep the equality signs if we have to divide through by a number we have to multiply through by that number so it balances and that's what I've done all along okay until we get the expression then everything in terms of z's and then we can apply the rules that we know about the results that we know about the relationship between the distributions and Bob your uncle. Phew, well done. Okay, get a rest.